Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing how we can actually build a real-time chat application utilizing .NET, SignalR, and React for our client application. We're gonna be going through step-by-step -step of what we need to do in order for us to build this application, from the configuration to building the client, etc. We're gonna be discussing why do we need to utilize WebSockets rather than REST uh, APIs in order for us to build a real-time chat application. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It will really help the channel. As well, before we get started within the video, I would like to thank my Patreons for supporting me across this year. Now with that said, grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. So before we get started, what we're going to be doing here, we're going to be understanding why are we going to be utilizing WebSockets and not HTTP requests. And once we understand why we are utilizing WebSockets, we're going to be seeing the mechanism of how they work. Now let's take a sample of our chat application of two users who want to communicate with each other. We're going to be basically going through the architecture of how this application will communicate through HTTP requests. And then we're going to be seeing how they're going to communicate through WebSockets. And we're going to be discussing the main benefits that we're going to be getting. So. Let's say here I have my application and this application is going to be called my chat app. And basically I'm going to have two users for the simplicity of this example. Let's find a user icon. So here I'm going to have my first user and this user is going to be called Muhammad. And I'm going to have another user and I'm going to call this user Lewis. So, I have my first user here and I have my second user here. Now what happens if this communication, these two wants to communicate with each other? We need a server. So let's find a server and let's get the server here. And basically my server is going to play the role of an int intermediator. So basically what's going to happen is whenever Muhammad wants to send a message, Muhammad is going to do a post request. And within this post request is going to go from my application to the server. And then what's going to happen? The server is going to be basically taking this request. It's going to find the database. So let's find the database. And we're going to take this information and we're going to be storing it inside the database. So now all of my information is already being stored in my database. So then, so this is going to be a post request so we can keep track of this. And then when Lois wants to see their messages on their, on their mobile phone or on their application, what do they need to do? They need to do basically another GET request. So they need to do a GET request. And this GET request is going to basically ask the server, do you have any messages for me? The server will say, okay, let me check the database. The database is going to do a query. We're going to find the results. The results are going to go send back to the server. From the server, they're going to be sent back to Lewis. So we can see here that we're going to have a few different uh, steps in order for us to get there. So the first one is going to be posting the request from our application to the server. The server is going to be doing another process, which is going to be the uh, sending the request to the database. The database is going to execute the query and get back the response. Then the server is going to send it back to the server in order for it to be processed and basically handle it pro properly. And then we're going to be sending it back to the user directly in order for them to see those responses. So we can see here with a simple GET request that we're doing we're going one, two, three, four, five actually processes in order for us to get these messages. And on the other hand, whenever, whenever Muhammad wants to send a message, Muhammad wants to prepare the message, so that's one. We're going to be sending it to the server, that's two. Then the server is going to store it inside the database, execute the query, and then we're going to be sending a 200. So we have three steps running here. And this is going to be also happening vice versa. So let's say Lewis wants to send a message. Whenever we want to do a post request, we're going to be sending it to the server and so on to the database. So we can see here that this actually is creating a bit of, of a lag between actually sending the, uh, sending the messages and receiving them. Because what we're doing here is whenever we're doing a get request is we're doing a pulling mechanism. So what is a pulling mechanism? A basically pulling mechanism is our application will do multiple get requests to the server saying like every 10 seconds, every 50, 30 seconds, every one seconds, we're saying, do you have any messages for me? The server will go check the database, get the information back and sending it to, to the user. So so this polling mechanism will basically allows the application to actually keep on checking if there's any new messages. But this will not come without a price because basically right now, whenever we want to do any checks on the database to have our messages, we need to do base execute five different steps in order for us to get there. And to execute these five steps, this is going to cost a lot when it comes to server resources, database resources, communication, inbound and outbound traffic, all of that's going to be costly for us as well. 
having the application to keep on trying every 10 seconds as well is not a real time. The best approach in order for us to utilize polling mechanism is basically to downgrade that polling time from 10 seconds to one second. And if we downgrade from 10 seconds to one second, that's only gonna increase the server resource that we're gonna be having. Because right now in this simple example, we're gonna having only two users. Imagine our application is gonna have around 10 million users using our application. 10 million users doing single 10 million requests every single time, every single second to our application in order for it to get the messages that only forgot not for posting the messages or doing any other changes that's going to require a lot of a big server farm in order for us to cater for this and it's not really going to be easily scalable manageable etc etc so this is where we can see uh, the the maybe the potential downfall of utilizing http request when it comes to having a chat application because all of this will have to come into place and basically a lot of resources we're gonna have to come into the server in itself in order for us to make this happen maybe this will happen for like a small uh, application where you're like, you know you have 10 100 a thousand users maybe that will work but for a large tier application that would definitely not work so what's the alternative options the alternative options let's just take a copy of this so we don't have to redraw everything again and then we can adjust it so the alternative approach is to have something called web sockets. So let's remove these because we don't really have this. I'm gonna remove these for now. And then we can re-add them whenever we need to. So first of all, in order for us to have, and let's remove this because we're gonna be utilizing different connections. What's gonna happen? When it comes to web socket connection, let's add here web sockets. So when it comes to web socket connection, whenever my application is open, I'm not, I didn't send anything, I'm not asking for anything, my application will basically initialize a new connection from the application to the server. It will basically say, hello server, I'm the application who's being utilizing it, I'm gonna be utilizing this, and I'm connected to you. So we're gonna say this red, sorry, in green, which means that this application has already established a live connection. So that's gonna be the main thing. We're establishing a live connection between the chat application and the server. Similarly, let's remove this polling mechanism. Uh, the other user will also have to do the same thing. Whenever they wanna connect, they will connect to the server and they will like, okay, hi server. I'm also gonna be connecting. So this is gonna be another live connection. So what we're doing here is we're establishing so between these two, what we did is we have established a connection between our clients and the server. So right now we did not send anything. We just made uh, aware that to the server that we have two clients currently connected to it. And that's it. And this server is basically uh, connecting through TCP between the two of them. Whenever one of these clients disconnect, the server will know that they have disconnected. But for now, what we're having here is we have established connection between these two uh, clients to the server. So what's happened then? Once we have established the, the connection, now we want to send a message. So let's say now Muhammad wants to send a message to Lewis. So again, when I, whenever I want to do this, I'm going to send a message directly to the server. I'm just going to utilize it like this. And I'm going to go do with this green color, blue color, so we know it is a connection uh, or a request coming in. So right now, whenever a request is actually coming in directly from my client to the server as sending a message, the server will directly notify the client that listen up there's a message coming for you that you need to actually handle so here we can see one of the main differences that we've seen previously what we had to do is the client will have to keep on querying the server asking them for like do you have any my messages do you have my messages on the other hand when it comes to web sockets we're actually doing the opposite once the client send the message to the server the server will directly forward this message to the client because they are already connected so the server will automatically realize that this message is going to go for this user and it will automatically forward it for them and that's going to be the main differences and when it comes to scaling this application this types of scalability is going to be much more easier to manage than having to manage a uh, endpoints in order for us to have these messages now you, you might say that you want to save those messages in your database you might want to keep a, a track of this that's completely fine you are able to do so but the main process behind them we are not relying right here in order for us to store these messages, uh, messages inside our database for the clients to be able to process these messages we're not relying at all the as soon as the message will come to the server the, mes the, serv the message will be forwarded to the right client by the server it will automatically know who is the client what's the and it will automatically forward the message so we are removing the bottleneck of actually relying on a database as the as the main storage mechanism to keep track of all of the messages because in this example here what will happen if for example my messages does not come into place or basically my uh, chat is not connected to me directly so what's going to happen here for example is whenever i do a get request i can have one message i can have 50 messages or 100 messages getting it back here basically i'm getting every single message at a time but we can see here one of the main benefits of http is we're going to be basically a to keep a track 
of all of these messages in case for example Lewis is not available online at this moment once they log in they will be able to get these messages similar concept will be can, can be implemented here directly through the database in order for us to do this and that's going to be a bit of our, uh, outside of the scope of today's video but the main idea is uh, to understand today is that we are able to actually connect the clients with the server and back to the client directly through establishing connection and sending messages we're not going to be relying on polling so let us see again like very quickly let's use the ai diagrams p request so i'm going to ask the ai diagram here to generate a straw diagram illustrating let's fix illustrating http requests versus websockets that's a very nice tool that will give me a diagram rather than me than drawing it. So now that my diagram is ready, let us see the main differences. So whenever we're doing a HTTP client request from the client to the server, we're basically doing a HTTP request when we're getting back the response. The main differences when it comes to, to WebSocket is gonna be basically we're doing a handshake, we're a handshake, we're establishing the connection between the client and the server. And once this connection has been established, we're basically, we're gonna have a bi-directional data exchange. And this bi-directional bi -directional data exchange is what's gonna allow us to actually send and receive messages directly from our servers rather than actually trying to handle everything through the database in order for us to store and then doing the, all of the polling mechanism and once basically when we want to term, terminate the connection we close the connection and we get back that the uh, confirmation of our closer so this is going to be the main differences between handling the http request as well as handling the websockets connection between the two and as you can see here that this is completely a different architecture when it comes to actually handling the communication this bi-directional data, bi -directional data Actions is going to be a really powerful tool in order for us to make sure that we have real-time uh, communication between our client and the server and between sending a message. So whenever we're sending a message to someone, this message is we're going to arrive instantly because we're going to have this bi-directional data exchange rather than having to rely on polling mechanism between the clients and the server in order for us to get these messages. So now that we have covered the theory of this in general, what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be going through step by step, creating a new web API, creating the chat endpoints for it, and then we're going to be creating a React app which is going to be handling as our clients in order for us to actually create a full chat application. So let's see this uh, and how we can actually implement it. So we're going to start first. Let me make this a bit, let me zoom in a bit. Okay, perfect. So first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating our web API. And it's gonna be straightforward, we already did this. And we're gonna be utilizing .NET, new web API. We're gonna give it a name. Actually, let's make sure it's a controller based. It doesn't really matter, but let's use it. And then we're gonna give it a name as formula1.chat service. So this will create for me my web APIs perfectly. I'm gonna open it up in Rider. So now that I have opened it up in Rider, what I wanna do here is I wanna open my terminal and I wanna install a package. And this package is gonna be .NET add package microsoft.aspnet.signalr. And basically Signal R is Microsoft library in order for us to handle WebSockets. It has been around, I think since 2012, and it's only got better and better. And basically Signal R is gonna be the main uh, library that we're gonna be utilizing in order for us to implement WebSockets within our, within our application for our travel application. So now that we have installed it, let's make sure it has been installed. Let's check our CS Proj. And here, as you can see uh, that my ASP.NET Signal R has been installed successfully, perfect. So now what I wanna do is inside my application, I'm gonna create a new directory. So add directory, and I'm gonna call this models because I'm gonna have to create some models. And inside this models, I'm gonna create a class and I'm gonna call this user connection. Because basically whenever, whenever a user wants to connect to my application, what are they gonna be providing? They can provide like a username, a password. They can actually provide the chat room they wanna utilize. What we're trying to build here is we're gonna be trying to build a very simplistic a chat application which is only gonna be asking the user for their name and whatever chat room they wanna join. We're not gonna be delving into the authentication and authorization and all of that. We're gonna be building a very straightforward application. And for this, we're gonna be utilizing a model called user connection. And within this model, we're gonna have two items. So the first one is gonna be a string and it's gonna be the username of the user. So username. And the other one is gonna be very simply the chat room that they wanna join. So once we have done that, the next step is again, inside my root directory, I'm gonna create a folder, I'm gonna call it hubs. 
So what does hubs mean? Signal R hubs are basically a way that's gonna allow us to establish connection between our server as well as our clients. And it's gonna allow us to actually have this communication or bi-directional communication between our clients and the server. And the hubs gonna play a crucial role here because they integrate directly into the, our ASP.NET Core pipelines. They're gonna allow us to have a direct endpoint for every single chat that we have. So we can, for example, have one hub for chat, one hub for notification, one hub for messages, and all of that, every single hub will have its own configuration inside our .NET application, and all of those will be utilizing the bi-directional communication in order for us to have the real-time communication. So inside my hubs folder here, I'm just gonna create a new class, and this class, I'm gonna call it chat hub. And once I had the class hub here, I'm gonna basically inherit from the hub class. And something to uh, keep attention to is basically whenever you wanna inherit, you're gonna see here that there's gonna be two types of hubs that's gonna be available. One inside the asp.microsoft.asp.net core.signal R, another one inside the microsoft.asp.net.signal R. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be relying on asp.net core signal R. Because if you put the asp.net, some of the functions will not be available and there's gonna be compatibility issues. So make sure you utilize the asp.net core uh, compatibilities. So as we said, a hub is basically gonna allow us to send and receive messages uh, between the clients because they are already connecting to, uh, connected to the, to the server. It's gonna allow us the bi-directional connection and it's gonna basically integrate within the middleware of our APIs. So once we have done that, now let's create our first very simplistic uh, endpoint within our Signal R application uh, or uh, inside our chat application so we can understand the concept of it. So we're gonna put public async task, let's say join chat, and I'm gonna utilize the connection. Actually, it's called user connection. Let's put user connection, and I'm gonna call it uh, con. And here, I'm gonna be utilizing await. And now I'm gonna, exp I'm gonna write it down, then I'm gonna explain it. So it's gonna be clients.all.send async. And here this needs to be the core one, not the ASP.NET. So send async, and here I'm gonna put, the first one is gonna be receive message. And then we're gonna put admin, which is gonna be the user who's sending this message back. And we're gonna be sending another argument, say, let's make it as a string concatenation. We're gonna put con.username has joined, something like that. Okay. Let's put all of this one on a different line so we're able to see it. Okay, so let's explain what's happening here. Because basically what we have done is we have inherited from hub. Once we inherited from hub, we got access to clients. And clients, as the description says, it allows us to actually invoke and send messages or receive messages from any of the clients that we are connected to. It's a way where we can actually see every single client that's connected to our, uh, to our web server. And basically from there, we are able to access them and send them any information or receive any information that we want. Then we have the all. All basically mean that we are actually targeting everyone. If we don't want to target everyone, there's something called groups, and this is something that we're going to be uh, discussing in the next uh, part of the video. But for now, we're just going to be sticking with all because it's the easiest one. And then what we have within all is we have send async. And send async here mean basically this is then allow us to send messages. And we're ha here we're going to have a method. We're going to have all the different arguments. So what is this method here uh, that we have? Basically, when a client send a message to the server, and the clients will have to receive back a message. Where, how does the server know to where it's gonna route this message? Because the client will also gonna be utilizing or gonna have a, uh, I wanna say like a certain endpoint that's gonna be living inside the client application that's gonna be responsible for handling all of the incoming uh, messages. And this is what we're doing here. We're saying is the client will have a method or function inside the client application called the receive message, which is gonna be responsible for receiving the message that we're gonna be sending. So this is a very simplistic, way to send a message to everyone who is connected to our application. And the reason I wanted to showcase that to show uh, to show you how easy it is to get started with Signal R and the web sockets. But we're gonna be now taking it to a next step where we can actually see how we can actually create the code where a user will be able to join a specific chat group. So let's put it here first, public async task join specific chat room. And we're gonna also take user connection, C-O-N-N. And then we're gonna put await groups.add to group async, and I'm gonna take the context.connection ID, and then I'm gonna take co and chatroom. So let's explain what's going on here. 
as you can see in the before one, we just send it to everyone. But here we're introducing the concept of groups. And groups is basically, we're creating like a sections inside our connections, or basically we are organizing our connections into different uh, areas. And what we're doing here is we're basically, we're taking the chat group that the user has provided as a main area. And what we're doing is we're adding that connection ID because every single connection that is, uh, let, let's go back to the diagram. So every single connection that uh, that is between the client and the server, once it has been established and we got back the confirmation, a unique connection ID is being created. And what we're doing is we're relying on this connection ID in order for us to allocate every single connection to the chat room rather than us having to rely on a username for now uh, and etc cetera, etc cetera. but for now to make it pretty straightforward and simple we're relying on this connection id which is, has been established directly once we have established the connection in order for us to rely on grouping those conversation so now that we have done that the next step is we're going to put await we're going to go back to clients dot group and this here basically we need to specify the group that we want to send to and here as you can see it's, it's requesting the group name i'm going to put connection dot chat room and then I'm going to put send async. And from here, again, I need to specify the message that the client's going to be listening on. I'm going to put receive message. And then here, I'm going to say the admin is going to be sending this. And I'm going to say, lastly, con.username has joined. And let's put the channel name here, the chat room name, con.chatroom. Again, let's do a quick recap on what we have done here. So basically what we have done here is we first allocated the group, assigned the group to that con specific connection. And then what we have done here is we have actually specified the uh, send back a message to that specific room only rather than to all. We specified the group, we specified the name of it, and then we have sent back the, the same message. So that's pretty straightforward. And this is basically what we have done. It's whenever a user uh, send a message or basically whenever a user join a group, uh, join a chat room, uh, you'll be able to see that Muhammad has joined this chat room or something like that. So this is going to be the main purpose of this. So now that we have done this, I want to go to my program.cs and start configuring this. So after our uh, app.builder, what I want to do actually, before our app.builder, whenever we have our builder class, I'm just going to put builder.services.useSignalR. And this is going to be the main thing which is going to allow us to actually utilize SignalR inside our application. And then the other step that we need to do is after our uh, app builder the dot build and before our app dot run what we want to do is we want to put app dot map hub and this is the hub that we had before and we're going to put the chat hub here and then we're going to say this is going to be the forward slash chat and this is going to be the endpoint that our application we're going to be able to listen to through, uh, through up sockets in order for us to actually connect and this is going to be chat not char perfect so now that we have done this, now we have at least some kind of a working backend for our chat application. We're going to be adding more functionality down the road, but this is like a initial working version of it. I'm just going to put .NET build now to make sure everything is building. .NET run, and we can see everything is running. So now let's go back to our terminal. And inside our terminal, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a React app. So in order for you to uh, to be able to utilize React, you need to have Node.js. So I'm just going to put Node dash dash version. I have already installed it, but make sure you have the latest version or a recent version of Node. Once you have done that, next you need to do npm install dash g create dash react dash app. What we have done here, we installed the package that's going to allow us to create a React application. I have already done so before and it's already uh, available on my machine. For you, it might take a bit longer. And now, once we have done that, I can utilize the npx command to put create dash react dash app. And here I'm going to define, give it a name, which is going to be my formula one dot chat app. Okay, I, sorry, I have capitalized it. I should not have capitalized it. So this will take also a few seconds, a few minutes. So let's wait until it's finished. A few moments later. Okay, perfect. So now that our application has created successfully, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to it and I'm just going to open it up inside Visual Studio Code. So now that my application has opened in Visual Studio Code, we can see here that I have my source app, which is perfectly, I have everything that I need here. Let's zoom out a bit. So the first thing that I want to do, I want to open my terminal and I want to install some packages. And the first one is going to be my signal R package to so npm install at, can you see this? Yeah. 
at Microsoft forward slash signal R. Okay, perfect. So now if I go to packages, you'll be able to see that I have the latest version of Microsoft Signal R. Perfect. The other, let's clear this. The other library that I want is Bootstrap. So I'm going to put again npm install react dash bootstrap bootstrap. Perfect. So again, as you can see, I have Bootstrap now and React Bootstrap. Great. So now that I have my pipeline configured to a certain extent, now what I want to do is I'm going to go to my source. I'm going to go to my app.js and what I want to do is I want to import my bootstrap library so let me remove this I don't really need it now and let me add it here I'm gonna put import bootstrap forward slash dist forward slash css forward slash bootstrap dot min dot css so now that I have this, the next step is I'm gonna actually start uh, configuring this. So let's do some cleaning up. So within this, the first thing is I don't want anything from this app.css. I'm gonna delete it. And let's make this really simple. We don't really need any of this. Okay, great. And I'm gonna even remove the class name. We don't need it. So now that basically I have a black canvas, let us, let us start creating our application here. So first things first, I'm gonna change this div with main. Actually, let's keep the div. I'm gonna add main here and I'm gonna add a container and inside this container I'm just gonna add a row and inside this row I'm gonna add a column and for this row I'm gonna give it a class equal px-5 my-5 this is pure bootstrapping and pure css you don't really have to do this just for simplicity sake I'm doing it I'm gonna put sm12 and inside my call here I'm gonna basically add an h1 and I'm gonna say welcome to the f1 chat app and I'm gonna give this one class class name actually it's gonna be font dash weight dash light just to make sure everything is running I'm gonna go back actually I'm gonna keep this running inside my terminal I'm gonna put npm start now it's running we can see it's running on localhost 3000 I have a problem row is not defined oh, I forgot I forgot to define this so as you can see here inside my bootstrap i have my call i have and let's add row so now we can see it compiled successfully and if i come here now we can see that i have my welcome to f1 chat up perfect so now that we have done that and at least i have a running something inside react what i want to do is inside my source i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call it components and inside my components folder i'm going to be creating the join chatroom component inside my component i'm going to be creating the waiting room where basically you're going to be able to see the uh, the two inputs where it's asking you to input your username and a password before you actually join the uh, chat room so here i'm going to add a new file i'm going to call this the waiting room.js and here what i want to do is i'm going to start first with const waiting room equal and we're going to fill this up later but for now let's keep it as is actually let's do it from now I'm going to have a math function called join chat room, which is going to be utilized. And now let's define my components before I do anything else. I'm just going to put export default waiting room. Perfect. So now that I have done this pretty straightforward now, all I'm going to do here is first of all, I'm going to try some states. So const and this state is going to allow me to store the username and the password. It's going to be username set username equal use state and it's going to be empty. I'm gonna put const, actually let's put username here, not user. I'm gonna put here chat room, set chat room, also use state, perfect. So now that I have done that, uh, let us now create a form. So I'm gonna put return form on submit equal, and I'm gonna close the form and we'll import it later on. Basically here on submit, what we're gonna put is gonna put, actually let's create an event. And within this event, we're gonna put e dot prevent default, which is gonna prevent the automatic refresh when we have this. And I'm gonna call the function that we have, which is gonna be join chat room. And I'm gonna pass the username and the chat room. Again, we have not set, the, set this up yet, but we're just doing we'll go with the work as we go. And we're gonna be modifying based on our need. So now that I have my form submission, now let's create our form. We're gonna have a row, and I'm gonna give this a class name. So I'll put the class name. It's gonna be similar, px5, px-5, py-5. 
let's fix this here now i'm gonna have my column and i'm gonna be of sm12 so now that i have my column my row i'm gonna build my form right now so i'm gonna put form dot group and inside my form group i'm gonna put my form control and this is gonna be a placeholder i'm gonna put here username and i'm gonna use the on change method i'm gonna put e actually it's a username and it's gonna be pe dot target dot value and i'm gonna close this let's put this in a new line okay so now that i have my username i'm just gonna copy this i'm gonna put here chat room and here's gonna be set chat room and perfect so now i'm using the user states in order for us to actually set the username and a password in the chat room great so now i'm gonna create my button so i'm gonna put another call sm12 and here i'm just gonna have an hr and then i'm gonna put a button and we're gonna put a variant of success so it will have a green button that type it will be submit and okay i'm gonna call this join perfect so now that i have done this the next step is i'm gonna add this to my app.js so i'm just gonna take waiting room i'm gonna come here and what i want to do here is after my row i'm just gonna add my component here perfect and as you can see it automatically been added if i go to my terminal where there is one error form is not defined so let's make sure we add this here okay let's add it in the imports so here what i can do is i can add form and we can see build successful if i come here we can see now i have my uh, chat room user chat room uh, i have my username i have my chat room i have my join button it will not work right now because the function does not exist which is completely expected but at least now i can see my ui great now let's uh, work on this functionality where we're actually able to join it, a chat room so let's go back to our visual studio code and let's go to our app.js and let's start building this function here so inside my function app i'm going to create first of all a state to manage my connection to make sure there's a connection or not so i'm going to put const con set connection equal use state and now here i'm going to creating my function and it's going to be const join chat room equal async username and chat room and basically what i want to do here i want to first do a try catch perfect now that i have my try catch enabled i want to do a start of all by establishing my connection and to do that i'm going to put const con equal hub connection hub connection builder a few moments later it got hot here so i had to change my hat to something a bit more comfortable because i have a bad hair day okay let's continue so now that we have created my hub connection builder let's actually build on that so we did not finish from here so what i want to do here is i want to add the following so first of all i want to specify my url for the server so i'm going to put with with url and here is going to be my url so i'm going to go back to rider and as you can see here my application is running on port 5230 so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to put this as the url that we're going to be communicating with let me remove all of this extra space perfect so now that we have done that now i want to specify the configuration for the logging so we're going to put configure logging and i'm going to specify the log level dot information perfect and lastly i want to do dot build so i'm going to build my connection great so now that i have done that the next step is i want to set up my handlers and handlers is basically here it's going to act whenever something is happening within my connection that i connected to it i disconnect from it etc etc so here i'm going to set up my handler and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put co on dot on and basically it means when i'm connected to it and this is the if you remember from here we had the receive message and this is basically i'm going to say this is going to be my receive message that's going to be uh, the user is going to be uh, listening to so i'm going to call this receive specific message because we don't really want to send generic ones you only want someone join a specific message so i'm just going to make this like this and here i'm going to specify the message specific message and i'm going to specify here the uh, user name and the message and basically what i want to do is i want to put for now console.log the uh, message so i'm going to put message and here we're going to basically say whatever the message has been uh, sent perfect so now that i have that the next step is i'm going to start my connection so i'm going to put await connection.start and then i'm going to invoke my message or basically invoke the endpoint that i currently have which is going to be await connection 
connection actually dot invoke and this invoke is gonna have to match with the name of my method here so join specific room i usually have a rule to name them both the same thing so i'm actually able to understand you can name them whatever you want but basically this one has to refer to this so we're gonna put invoke it's gonna be join specific chat room service and i'll have to specify my username and my chat room and lastly i have to put set connection to con and basically what I'm doing is I'm setting up my connection inside my state. So now if I go back to my terminal, we can see here that chat room is not available. So let's see what is that. Mistyped it here. Perfect. We can see it's running. Okay. Now this is my joint chat room. What I want to do is I want to pass my joint chat room to my uh, waiting room. And this is going to be the way the component will be able to know. So I'm going to put here join chat room. It's going to take the join chat room message. So now we can see here that only the hub connection icon is never used, which is perfect. I don't really need this hub connection. I needed the hub connection builder. And now this con we're gonna be utilizing later on whenever we wanna send the message, but nothing for now. Now, if I go back to my uh, React uh, application, I'm gonna open the inspect so we can check the console. Let me zoom in a bit into the console. I'm gonna go here to the console. Right now we can see there's a lot of errors. I'm gonna empty it out. I'm gonna refresh this. That's fine. I'm going to put username Muhammad, chat room, let's say team 44, join. You can see we got an error. Let's see. So there's an issue. Uh, I did not put the new. So let's see. And I forgot to put the new keyword here. Now let's try this again. Let's clear this up and I click on join. Okay, we have a different error. And ta -ta -ta, fail to complete. Connection started. Let's say the network. And I think I know the problem because the problem here right now is we need to set up the course because right now what we're doing is we're doing cross domain calling because we have, we're, we're having this running on port 3000 where our application is running on port uh, 5230. So this one not going to be able to communicate with each other. So for this, we need to fix our cores in order for us to uh, make it work. So to do that, it's going to be quite simple. Let's stop the application. We're going to go to our program.cs and we're going to be adding our uh, cores rules here. So before we do the builder.build, let's add the following. We're going to put builder.services.add cores. And then I'm going to specify my options. And it's going to be quite simple, the options. So we're going to put options dot add policy. And this policy, I'm going to call it my React app and call it whatever I want. And then I'm going to specify the builder. And then here I'm going to specify builder dot with origin. Specify the endpoint, which is going to be localhost 3000. So let's copy this. And then what I want to do after this, I'm going to say dot allow any header, allow dot allow any method dot allow any credentials and then once i have done that all i need to do is just let me copy my uh, policy name which is going to be react app and here before this i'm going to put app dot use cores and i'm going to specify my policy name so now let's run this again dot not run we can see it's running if i go back here clear this up join same thing let's see maybe we can get a bit errors oh I missed this here. So we need to add the chat because what we have done here inside our hub is we have specified the endpoint and the endpoint here is forward slash chat. So he would not specify that. So that was another problem that we had to fix. So let's try this again. Now let's clear this up and join. Let's stop the application and run it. Sometimes this will help. And let's run this. NPM start. And let's put Muhammad team 44 join same let's see the problem so now once we test it out we can see it's connected and we can see we received the message muhammad has joined team 44 and this is the exact same message that we currently had inside our hub here we can see muhammad has joined uh, 44 perfect so now that we know exactly that our connection is working between our client and the server and that's what exactly what we need to do in order for it to make it work so first of all the, the first problem was we did not add the chat here and the second one is we did not enable cores inside our application so to enable cores just make sure you follow the same thing and don't forget to remove the last forward slash because it will not work and make sure you add it into your uh, app.use cores uh, functionality there 
so once we have done that the next step is so let's now let's go back to rider what we want to do right now is you want to add some kind of persistency for our messages inside our web api in order for us to actually whenever a user will be able to join we're able to store those messages there and we're able to send them back so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating an in-memory database inside our web api and it's going to be a dictionary and again, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can create your own uh, database structure uh, connected to an actual database. We're not gonna be doing that. We're gonna be doing an in-memory database just to make it simple and not make this video like 10 hours long. So let's see how we can do this. So inside Rider, what I wanna do here is I'm just gonna create a new directory. I'm just gonna call it data service. Again, it's gonna be pretty uh, straightforward. And inside of this, I'm gonna create a new class. I'm gonna call it my uh, shared DB. Can call it whatever I want or in memory DB or anything that I want. And here, all I'm going to do is put public. Actually, let's make it private, read only, concurrent dictionary. And this dictionary is going to take a string and the user connection. And then I'm going to call this connections. And then I'm going to have a public concurrent dictionary string user connection underscore actually connections equal underscore connections I forgot the arrow okay so now that i have this inside my program.cs all i'm gonna do here is before the build i'm gonna put uh, builder dot services dot add singleton and here i'm gonna add my shared db now it's gonna be available for me and now inside my chat i need to initialize it into my constructor so i'm just gonna put here public private read only shared db shared i'm gonna put a constructor actually let's make it the short one so we can put public chat hub shared db shared underscore shared equal to shared and now basically i can utilize my shared db inside my application as much as what i want so now basically what i have is i have created an in-memory database in order for me to store my uh, connection incoming uh, connection inside my uh, dictionary perfect so once I have done that, I want to build the functionality to send the message. So let's do this here. So public async task send message string message. And this is going to be if underscore shared dot try dot connections dot try get value. It's going to be context context dot connection ID out user connection uh, connection. And then I'm going to put here await clients dot group con.group.chat.chat room and then here we're gonna put dot send async I'm gonna put receive message and then here we're gonna put who the person who sent it to which is gonna be the username it's gonna be con.username and the message that they have sent perfect so what we're doing right now here in order for us to send message is we still need to update this one so we can take advantage of this but basically actually let's update it and then we can discuss it so shared connections context dot connection id equal c1 so what we're doing here is whenever uh, someone joins our chat room we're adding basically their unique connection id with their information to this in memory database and then when someone wants to send a message, what, what we're doing is we're taking that connection ID because we don't really every single time we're doing a, a sending a message, we want to get the username and the chat room, etc., etc., because they're already connected. So this information should be available for us. So what we're doing is once the actual user connected, we're storing this information inside this in-memory database. And then whenever we want to send a message, we're taking their unique connection ID that has been established. And then once we take this unique connection ID, then we're actually utilizing it in order for us to send a message there. So basically here, what we're doing is we're tapping into this shared memory here. So if you're using a database connection, you need to utilize your database. We're trying to extract value from our uh, dictionary based on the connection ID and the value we're restoring it inside our CON variable. And what we're saying is similar to what we have done before. We're saying groups, uh, chat, uh, the unique chat room which is this user belong to and then we're sending the message that receive specific message that we had before and this time instead of being the system who's sending it, it's going to be the user who's sending it and we're passing the message that the user have sent so here we can see that this is how we can actually send the message so now that we have done that i want to go back to my angular application actually let's stop this and let's run it again again dot not run and i'm going to go back to my visual studio code 
and I want to add another handler and this handler will allow me to actually whenever there's a receive message I'm going to be able to uh, utilize it so here I'm going to put con dot on let's take the name of this receive specific message I'm going to put here username message and I'm going to put here the I need to create a messaging state so I'm going to put const messages set messages equal use state and we're going to initialize this to an empty array so here what I'm doing is I'm going to put set messages uh, it's going to be the message and actually let's make it in a different way because what I want to do is I want to append it to the end of the messages because we're going to have a lot so I'm going to put set messages messages and one two three messages username and the message perfect so we created an array of objects for messages and what we're doing here every single time a new message comes in we're adding to or accessing the state we're accessing the messages and then we're basically we're appending at the end of the messages the new message that we currently have as simple as that so now in order for us to put everything together we're going to be needing another component when this component is going to be called let's go to it new file it's going to be our chat room .js and it's going to be pretty straightforward so let's start first with const chat room equal and here we're gonna be utilizing the messages we got had we just had some messages and i'm gonna have a messages and i'm gonna have here a div and inside this div i'm gonna have a row and this row is also gonna have the class name similar to what we had before px-5 py-5 perfect and then here i'm gonna specify my column sm equal 10 so let's add column here and I'm also going to have my h2 here. So I'm going to put h2 chat room. And then I'm going to have to add another one, which is going to be leave it empty. Actually, yeah, let's make just this 12. Actually, we're going to need it now. We're going to add a leave button later on. So let's leave it as empty for now. And then what I want to do is I'm going to add another row just to make it more consistent row. And this row, we're going to give it the same class. px-5 py-5 and here all I'm going to be doing is call sm12 and then here I'm going to specify a reusable component which I'm going to be creating it's going to be called message container and it's going to be responsible for operating my messages and I can do this right now it's pretty straightforward let's create it now and then we can pass it pretty straightforward so once we have done that all I need to say here is export default chat room so again, before we forget, message container, let's create this directly here. Add a new file, message container.js. And the message container is going to be pretty straightforward. All it's going to do is going to put const message container equal. It's going to take the messages and it's going to be return. So return div. And here we're going to put basically messages, dot map, message, and index. And then from here, we're going to return a table strip and bordered and then from here we're gonna put a tr and this tr will have a key equal to the index and lastly we're gonna put a td and this td will contain basically my message and the message.username perfect so now if i go back here let's see what's going on i still have everything running if i go back here i need to update now my app.js to reflect this so now what i want to do here i want to update this waiting room so basically what i want to do is i want to say whenever my connection is actually running i want to actually display my uh, chat room if not i want to actually uh, display my waiting room so it's pretty straightforward to do so i'm going to put here if connection is not running i'm going to basically showcase my waiting room else oops let's make this here so if my connection is not running i'm going to showcase put this here I'm going to showcase my waiting room as if it is running I'm going to showcase my chat room and then in order for my chat room to work it's going to require the messages that I have and then here I'm going to pass my messages so now if I come back here to my terminal we can see here that I have problems so let's fix this message container is not defined so let's add this so chat room message container is not defined so let's add it actually let's try to do this import message container from from message container so now if we go back to terminal one error 
it says imported is not found why isn't it not found oh i did not export it export default message so now we build it successfully if i go back here let's reset this and let's do the username muhammad and the chat room team 44 join join specific we have a problem with it so let's see this if i go to network okay let's see what the problem here okay we got an error okay so now that we are testing it so let's test it out let's clear this up i'm gonna put here muhammad team 44 join and let's run this let's remove, remove those breaking points and let's run this and you can see here i have a problem with my pop okay let's fix this error right now okay so the main way to fix this uh, we had a typo here inside our chat room so i put three s's for messages instead of two and that was basically what halting um, the mapping from working so now if we go back and we take a look at this let's refresh this page let's remove these logs and right now here what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna put a username i'm gonna say muhammad and the chat's gonna be team 44 i'm gonna click on join and we can see i have joined this, uh, this chat room and i have got the message here that i have joined it successfully and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to a different browser i'm gonna open it and let me just put it here i'm gonna go also to local host 3000 and it's gonna be a different chat room so basically this is where we're making a different user and what i want to do is i'm going to insert a different username i'm going to put lewis and chat room is also going to be team 44 and now once i join here we can see directly i have received a message saying lewis has joined this chat as well here i was able to propagate that lewis has joined this chat as well so this is a really cool thing so as soon as i clicked on join a message has went from my client to the server. The server uh, got the response and basically sent it back to the chat room. All of that happened instantly between the two and basically I did not have to worry about it. And let's see that something else. So right now if I refresh this page and I put Lewis, but instead of joining team 44, I put for example team or I put Mercedes as a different chat group. I click on join. We can see that the, the team 44 chat group did not get notified because Lewis joined a different chat room and here we can see that separation of concerns between the two and how do they work and basically how they allow us to actually have unique different chat rooms based on the connection id and based on the information that i'm providing okay great now let's continue developing this by adding the capability of adding a message so let's see how we can do that or sending a message so let's go back to let's go back to visual studio code and inside Visual Studio Code, I'm going to add a new file and I'm going to call this file message. I'm going to call this file send message form.js. And this is going to be quite simple. So I'm going to put const uh, send, oops, send message form. And this is basically going to take the send message function, which we're going to be creating. And basically from there, we're going to be able to create our simple form that we need so i'm going to put const message set message and here we're going to be utilizing states so use state perfect and now all i'm going to do is I'm going to return my form so form on submit is going to be an event and from this event what we need to do is i'm going to put e dot prevent default so we don't the, the page will not refresh and I'm gonna call the send message and I'm gonna pass the message attribute from my um, use state and then I'm gonna basically set the message again to uh, null so basically it will be empty in my text box so once I do that now I can actually focus on closing the form and he, what I need to do is I need to first of all specify my input group and I'm gonna call give this a class I'm gonna say it's mb3 and then I'm going to specify my input group text and I'm going to say this is chat, quite simple. And then after this, what I want to do is I want to add my uh, form control and let's give this information. So I'm going to say on change, what I want to do, I'm going to take my event, I'm going to put set message 
and basically all is going to be e dot target dot value quite simple and then all i'm going to do after this i'm going to put value equal to my message so in simple terms this is where we're going to be handling my message input from the user and as soon as they input anything on change i'll capture it and i save it into my state and let's give one more thing at the end here which is going to be my placeholder and i'm going to say message type message type a message so now that i have done this inside my uh, input group what i need also to do is and i create a button and this button is going to be responsible for sending the message and then we're going to give it a variant and this variant is going to be green or actually blue for primary so we'll be able to utilize it to send i'm going to give it a type of submit and i'm going to make it disabled in case there's no message and the body of the button will be sent okay great once i have done that now i need to do an export default and i'm gonna send message form okay perfect so now i'm gonna go back to my app.js and what i need to do is i need to create a new uh, function which is going to be responsible for sending a message so also i'm going to be creating it after the join function chat and here it's going to be quite simple i'm going to put const send message equal async messages and we're going to be basically actually message not messages we're going to be taking the uh, we're going to do sorry a try catch and we're going to put here catch and we're going to be basically taking the e and we're going to just simply do console.log in case anything goes wrong and then here what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my method that i want to utilize so it's going to be await con dot invoke send message we did not create this on the server but we're going to be creating it now and i'm going to pass the message okay perfect so now that i have done this now let's go back to my uh actually let's finish setting up this and then we can set up my web server so what i need to do here is i need to pass the send message here so i'm going to go down to my chat room service and i'm going to add here send message equal send message and basically here with this i'm actually able to uh, take the send message and uh, pass it forward so within the chat room what i need to do here is i need to update this so it will take the send message as well and then what i need to do is after i have my uh, message received so i'm going to add a new um, column let's copy this and here i'm going to use my new component which is called message or uh, send message form and this will take my send message perfect so now that i have done this let us see if the ui will is updated so we can see here directly in the ui i have my chat i have my type my message and i have my button now if i put anything so now what we can see here we can actually send them so i'm gonna say hello hi i say muhammad said hi if i go to my other browser i'm gonna refresh here i'm gonna put lewis again and I'm going to put the chat room team 44, click on join, it's a different day, I'm going to say hi, Lewis said hi, Muhammad's going to reply, say hello there, and we can see it automatically, let's make this a bit smaller, so we can see it on both screens, hello there, we can see it updated, then let's close this for now, I'm going to say, uh, looking forward for the new season, and Muhammad's gonna reply yes very much so so we can see here directly we have two clients we're having a direct connection between them we have a directly chat application between them we're not relying on anything between the two like a pulling mechanism between the client and the server we're relying on web sockets to basically send my connections between my uh, client my two clients into my server and back and basically what we're farming here is the connection identity so as soon as i refresh this all of this will go on because we're going to have a new connection uh, uh, identity generated once we actually authenticate and agree with the connection id with the server 
But in order for us to uh, make sure that all of this is actually working, we're relying this uh, sample chat application on the connection ID that is actually being generated directly through, uh, once we sub establish the connection between the client and the server. In the real world scenario, we need to rely on the username to capture the chat history. We need to store them in a database. There's a lot of different functionality that we need to add. This is just like a proof of concept of utilizing Signal R with WebSockets in order for us to make sure that we're actually able to create a real-time chat application between two different clients. And we can see here the scalability of this. It will make it much more easier to scale on the long on the long run with millions and millions of subscribers or millions and millions of users using our application because basically we're only going to be sending messages whenever we have something available for us inside our uh, server. So whenever a client sends this rather than relying on long-term pulling that's going to happen whenever a client is basically just waiting and trying again to receive a message. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions, please, please let me know. Please put them in the comments down below and I'll make sure to address them. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.